السلام علیکم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ الحمدللہ رب العالمین نحمدو و نستعین و نستغفر و نؤمنو بہی و نتوکر علیہ و نعوذ اللہ من شر انفسنا من سیعت احمالنا بیحد اللہ فلا مدلہ فما یلہ فلا حد اللہ نشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک لہ وشهد أن محمد نبده ورسوله أما بعد. To you, my beloved brothers, imams, leaders, presidents, principals of schools, fathers, mothers, and students, I am very thankful to Allah to have the privilege to address you tonight for a few moments. I want to first thank all of the students as they bravely stood before us and made wonderful presentations on the very difficult situation. I am very proud of them. And the speeches that they made, the ice that they recited, all of them did a magnificent job. As I get older, I recognize the need to speak less. I don't want to speak a long time anymore. And when I speak longer than I should, it is only because of weakness in myself. Because the longer we speak, the more we run the risk of making mistakes, offending people, misunderstandings, I ask Allah tonight to make my speech short and to touch all of you and myself to do some work for him. I must admit that everybody can't see in the same degree. There are people in this room tonight who are experienced enough, wise enough, to look at a little seed and can tell you exactly what that seed will become. But not everybody. Most of us can't recognize the seed. But if the seed is planted, and then the seed begins to grow, then more people can recognize it as the seed begins to take shape and, and then a few more people can recognize, but not everybody. But the more the seed begins to grow until it becomes a tree. And then a whole lot of people can recognize because it's a tree now. But even there are those who cannot even recognize the tree until it produces fruit. And then they can say, yes, this is an apple tree, came from an apple seed, because I didn't recognize the seed, but now I see the fruit and I know what it is now. And I must admit tonight that even there are some people, even after the fruit has been produced, even then they can't recognize it, they're blind. Not all of the Muslims in America or throughout the world recognize the need of having Islamic education. Some of them, like Sister Samina and others, know from the very beginning the need to have Islamic education. Some of us sitting in the room tonight might find out tonight. Some of us may not know until years from now. I hope that is not too late. Tonight, as we go forth into the new era, a new time, we must never forget the great gift that Allah gave us in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all over the Muslim world, people celebrate, they commemorate 
the great sirrah of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam, and we should. He's the example, he's the model. And we need to always go back to his history, to learn from it so that we could do something today and, and, and for the future. One of the great lessons that I learned from the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam was that he was a great teacher. And I imagine that one of the true tests of how great the leader is, is the quality of students that he produces. If you want to see a great teacher, then you measure that great teacher by the students that he produced. What students have we produced? If you want to see a great student, look at Abu Bakr and the great student of the Prophet became Khalifa. If you want to see a great student, look at Umar ibn Qatab, look at Uthman, look at Ali, look at Khadija, look at Fatima, look at Aisha. Look at all the great Sahaba. So Allah blessed this great teacher, the Prophet والسلام, to produce all of these great students. Indeed, he said, Khairu ummati qarni thumma ladhina yilunahum thumma ladhina yilunahum. The best of my ummah is my generation. The generation of great students. And then the generation that follows them, and then the generation that follows them. Today, if I could, in the next two or three minutes, if I could do something tonight, I would wish that this school of Islamic studies will, will grow to become one of the great institutions in America. This is my dua, that this school will grow to be one of the greatest educational institutions in America. Now, I'm going to say something, brothers and sisters, that's going to sound like I'm bragging. I'm warning you now. It's going to sound like I'm bragging, like I'm boasting. But I have to ask you a question. How many Muslim schools do we have full-time Muslim schools in Fort Lauderdale? How many? One. How many full-time Muslim schools do we have in Miami? Some said one, some said none. Let's say one. In New York City, we have 17 full-time Muslim schools. Sound like a brag, doesn't it? But it's not. I read in the newspaper, New York Post, two weeks ago, Monday edition, an article entitled, The Rise of Islam in New York City. And that article said that there are 100,000 Muslim students in New York City going to public school. Question. If there are 17 full-time Muslim schools in New York City, and each school has a population or enrollment of 350 students, which they don't, how many students in New York City going to full-time Muslim school? I see you taking out your calculator. No more than 5,000. Give us the figure. 59, 5,950 students going to Muslim schools. That means that less than 5% of the Muslim students in New York City go to full-time Muslim school, the rest go to public school. So on the surface, 17 sounds like a lot. But in reality, 17 is nothing compared to what we need. Now, brothers and sisters, I'd like to leave with you tonight an, a, an attitude. I once read a book and this man said that the most important knowledge that a person can ever get 
is the knowledge of themselves. I respectfully disagree. I believe that the greatest knowledge, the most significant and important knowledge that a person can have is the knowledge of Allah. Most important knowledge that we can have is the knowledge of Allah. For once we understand Allah and understand, then we can understand ourselves. But we must begin with the knowledge of Allah. And tonight, for a few moments, I'd like to leave you with an attitude. I was in the city of Dallas, Texas last week, and I asked the audience, I'm going to ask you the same question. I said, if you could choose to be one of the companions of the Prophet, وسلم, which one would you choose? Predictably, they said Abu Bakr. Others raised their hand and said Omar. Others raised their hand and said, I would be Ali. Some said, I would be Aisha. Some said, I'd be Fatima. Some said, I would be Khadija. And all of them, they raised their hand saying that I would be, if I had the opportunity, I'd be this Sahaba. Predictable. But me, if I had a chance to be any of the Sahaba, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Abu Bakr, Umar, or Ali, wouldn't be Bilal bin Rabah. Obviously, it wouldn't be Khadija. Me being a man. But I would choose to be Uqaysha, Ibn Muhsin, Ibn Mihsin. Most of you say who? Most of the Muslims not even familiar with this name, Uqaysha. Who was he? One of the early con converts uh, uh, to Islam. Fought in the Battle of Badr. But he's not known by so many people. Why, Imam Siraj, would you choose him if you had an opportunity to be any of the Sahaba? I would choose him because of what I read happened during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in my conclusion. One day the Prophet وسلم, said, I was shown all of the ummah, umen. And there was a prophet, and with him was a group of followers. And there was another prophet, and he had two or three followers. And there was a prophet that only had one follower, and there were some, some prophets that had no followers. And then I was shown a great multitude. وَقِيلَ Ali and was said to me, هَذِهِ أُمَّتَكَ This is your ummah. وَمَعْهُمْ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَلَعَذَابٍ And among your ummah, with them, are 70,000 people, 70,000 followers that will go to Jannah without any accounting and no punishment. Ukasha ibn Mihsin stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, Udu Allah an yaj'alani minhum. Oh, Messenger of Allah, please ask Allah, make dua that I could be one of them. And the Prophet said, Anta minhum. You are one of them. If I could be somebody, I want to be that Sahaba. Not just go to Jannah, but go to Jannah bi ghayri hisab wa la no accounting and no punishment. Now I want you to stop and think for a moment. You think 70,000 people are a lot of people? 70,000 is a lot, but compared to the ummah size, it is a very small number. There are approximately 1 billion, 300 million Muslims on the earth. 70,000 is what percentage of 1 billion, 300 million? Don't even try to figure it out. Your calculator not big enough. Minuscule. But that's just talking about the Muslims now. What about the Muslims ever since 
the time of the Prophet how many of them? And I read, I read, I used to ask myself the question beforehand, I used to wonder, how many people ever been on the earth? You ever, you ever, you ever ask yourself that question, how many people ever been on the earth? You know, you know something, you want to see something remarkable, look at this, this Allah is great, Allah is, subhanAllah, look at this ayat. يَا يَنَّسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاهِدًا وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّا مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٍ كَثِيرٌ وَنِسَاءٌ Right? وَبَثَّا مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٍ كَثِيرٌ وَنِسَاءٌ And from these two, Adam and his wife came countless men and women. You want to see somebody who knows how to organize, somebody who knows how to plan? Here's Allah put one man and one woman on the earth. And he didn't have to create man every day, create another man, create another man, create another man. No, create one man and put everything in that man. So all of us would come from Adam and his wife. How many? According to one scientist, he did a research in 1995, and said from the beginning, there have been 105 billion people on earth. 105 billion people on earth. Look! And all those 105 billion people that ever lived on the earth live on the same earth big enough, enough food, enough space. Allah is a great creator. Everything we need is right there. He planned it like that, made the earth big enough. So now, brothers and sisters, I, I leave you with this. What does that have to do with the Sira? And what does that have to do with the School of Islamic Studies? And what does it have to do with us tonight? You know, brothers and sisters, um, I met a young girl, Muslim sister, on the West Coast. And every time I would go to California, I would see her. She would attend my lectures. A young girl. And one day she came to me and said, you know, Imam Siraj, I was born a Muslim. Her parents are from the Middle East. And she used to say, she said, you know, Imam, I used to say that I'm definitely going to go to Jannah. Yeah. She said, man, yeah, I'm going to Jannah for sure. That's what she used to say. She said, one day she attended a lecture by... Imam Hamza Yusuf and got some knowledge and she said you know what Imam ever since I attended that lecture I said to myself you know what if I don't get myself together I'm going straight to hell you see brothers and sisters I want to leave you with an attitude what attitude is that we have to have the right perspective of Allah the knowledge of Allah and you know what? I used to be very confident about going to Jannah. Yeah. You might even say a little cocky. But I don't feel that way no more. I feel real humble. Yeah, Rob, please. Because when I read the Hadith, only 70,000 will go to Jannah without any accounting and no punishment. That means all the rest, inshallah, if they go, no problem, but there's a price you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to do some accounting. And some of us are going to have to receive some punishment. So I leave you with these words of the Quran. You know, I was on my way from London a couple of days ago. And it was an eight-hour trip, and I was preparing for my class. And as I was preparing for my class, I thought about the Juma Khutbah. And I thought about an ayah. I said, you know what, tomorrow... I'm going to talk about this ayat in the Quran. But before I look up this ayat, I want to look up another ayat for my class. So I looked up the ayat for my class first, and the very next ayat I didn't know was the very ayat I was looking for. Right? So I jotted it down. And when I got out of the plane in New York City, I got in my car, my driver picked me up, and I had a cassette of the Quran. And I put it in my car, turned it on, and guess what ayat came? The same exact ayah, and this is the ayah. 
and then we finish. Know that Allah is severe in punishment and He is forgiven and merciful. Know, have knowledge, know that Allah is severe in punishment and know that Allah is forgiven and merciful. Why do I say that? Tonight, brothers and sisters, my dua is that every one of you and your children be blessed to go to Jannah. That's one dua. But that Allah will, will, will spare us of the punishment also. Now, I want you to have the right spirit about this school. And what is this? You know something? You might be able to anticipate your wife or your husband, but you can't figure out Allah. You see, meaning that have fear that if we don't get it together, he punish us, but at the same time have hope that he's forgiven. So you never know. Don't be so confident to think that we got it made, but be full of hope that he will bless us. Have the balance. Okay, now here it go. If I ask the Muslims, which is the most important article of action as a Muslim, what would you say? What would you say? Of the articles of faith, of action, which is the most significant, the most important? Salat. Anyone would say that. Whoever leads off Salat, they disbelieve. So the Prophet said. So they would say Salat. If you ask the average Muslim, which would be the first thing Allah is going to judge us on Yom Al-Qiyamah, we would say, it's the Salat. So it's the Salat that is significant. Question. Does every Muslim have to give zakat? Every Muslim? No. There are some Muslims who are needy, who need zakat. Must every Muslim fast? No. Some can't do it. Some are sick. Some are too old to fast. So every Muslim don't have to fast. Must every Muslim make hajj? No. For men whoever has the ability to go there, but every Muslim don't have to make hajj, every Muslim don't have to give zakat, every Muslim don't have to fast. But does every Muslim must they pray? Yes. And when you read the Quran, and what has gotten you into hellfire? We are those who didn't pray. So there are people going to be wind up in hellfire because they didn't what? They didn't pray. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm almost finished. Can you give me three more minutes? You're not saying anything. You're not going to give me three? If you don't give me three, I'm going to take five. No, I'm going to take five. Take ten. Do I have fifteen? No. I wanted to say this, and brothers and sisters, I want to put things in perspective for you, that's all. I just want to put things in perspective. I read a hadith that scared me. I must admit, it scared me. It kind of helped me get myself together. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, if there is some Muslim on Yom Al-Qiyamah who owes zakat have gold and silver and didn't pay the zakat, Allah will heat up 
the gold and silver in the fire of hell until it becomes so hot that Allah would brand the person who didn't pay zakat on his head, forehead, on his side, and on his back. And when the, the uh, brand becomes cool, he will put it back again in the fire of hell and heat it again and then place the heat brand on the forehead in the back and on the side. And when it, and it cools, then he will heat it up again and he will do it again. And when it cools, he will heat it up again. How long a day? How long the day? Hamsina al Fasana. 50,000 years until all the bodies judged. Now I started thinking, wait a minute, judgment day. You see, brother and sister, see, judgment take time. You ever go to court? You ever see a court case? O.J. Simpson case, how long did it take? All these famous cases, how long it take? Because you have to have witnesses. See, judgment takes time. Because whoever does an Adam's way of evil shall see it. And everything is in the book. Everything that we do is in the book. It's written in the book. And we're going to have to be judged on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Son, the feet of the, the, the servant of Allah will not move on the day of judgment until he has asked many things. One of them is, how did you earn your wealth? Ted Turner? Where you get it from? Yeah, I got billions of dollars, but where did you get the billions of dollars from? You're going to be asked on Yom Kiyama and you got to give an accountant. Did you get it because you stole from somebody? Did you kill somebody for it? Did you use it in a business, in a, in a business that's not permissible by Allah? How did you earn your money? This is the judgment day now. And then how did you spend it? Yeah, I got all this money and I spent it the way I want to spend it. No, you don't, buddy. Because they're going to be an accountant and that takes time. I ask myself, if 105 billion people, let's say, are going to be judged. Let's just give it. And let's say each person is only going to be judged one minute. It's going to be more than a minute, by the way. How long would a judgment take? 105 billion minutes. How many years is that? Don't try to figure it out, by the way. Too long. But you know what? You know what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I just think about this hadith. يَدْخُلُونَ الْفُقَرَ الْجَنَّةَ قَبْلَ أَغْنِيَاءَ مِنْ خَمْسٍ مِنْ خَمْسٍ مِيَةٍ عَامٍ Poor people will go to Jannah before the rich people. Allahu Akbar. I'm sorry. Poor people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Poor people will go to Jannah 500 years before rich people. So you say, so what? Big deal. You see, it is a big deal if you're just chilling for 500 years. You know, oh, you don't know what I mean by chilling. I, I, have, to, I, have, to, I have to break it down to, to my brothers and sisters from the island. Chilling means like, you know, I'm going to cool out for 500 years until my time, my time to go to Jannah. But it's not like that. That's going to be some real difficult time. People are going to be sweating because we're going to be being judged and take a long time. And then you know what? And after that punishment for not paying zakat for 50,000 years, see, you think what, see, think what 50,000 years. See, brothers and sisters, we live a short life. Even if you live the average age in America, 70 years old, 71 years old, okay, 100 years. Okay, 150 years. That's nothing. 500 years, that's seven lifetimes. But 50,000 years? And then, then, after the 50,000 years of that punishment, then you will be shown your place in either the heaven or the hell. You probably didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear me, did you? Why am I saying this? Ilamu and Allah shadidu iqab. No, that Allah is severe in punishment. Allah is not playing, Allah is real. But on the other hand, wa an Allah ghafur rahim. But know that Allah is very forgiving and merciful. You know what the Prophet said, alayhi salam? He said, if you come to Allah with the whole mountain of sin, 
and ask for Allah's forgiveness, Allah will bring you a whole mountain of forgiveness. I read in the newspaper on the way here, I couldn't believe it. You remember you reading the hadith about this man who killed a hundred people and Allah forgave him, murdered a hundred people? I never thought there'd really be people who could murder a hundred people. I read today in the newspaper, a man in, in, uh, in South Africa was just uh, convicted for killing 38 people and raping ex, I forgot how many women, 40, 40 something women. They just convicted him in South Africa recently and sentenced him to, I think, uh, 4,000 years life imprisonment. Well, that's light compared to what he's going to get in your Kiyama if Allah doesn't forgive. Can you imagine a prostitute? She goes in a well and gets water. And when she comes up, she sees a dog that's thirsty. And she climbs back in the well, take off her shoe, and put water in the shoe, put the shoe in her mouth, climb out of the well, and give water to a dog. She didn't give water to a prophet or a Muslim or even a person. She gave water to a dog, and Allah forgave her sins. Allah ghafur rahim. You can't, see, you can't, you can't, you can't figure it out. See? Allah severe in punishment, and he's also ghafur rahim. He's very forgiving and merciful. You can't even count how merciful he is. So tonight, brothers and sisters, I ask you this. I thank, I thank the organizers for inviting me. I tell you why. I believe on Yom Al-Qiyamah that if we just made intention tonight to do something for Allah, Allah will help us and make our burden less. I believe that. And therefore, I thank the organizers for inviting me to, to take part of this. You should do the same thing. May Allah bless you and increase your wealth as a result of you giving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give you that much more and bless you always with the ability to give, inshallah. And may Allah make your accountant easy on Yom Al Qiyamah, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bleed. Um, bless you and, and your family to be among those who go to Jannah, inshallah, with little accounting. Well, alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan.